Number 10. The gym is useless if you don't forego temptation. Have you ever wondered why you're such a couch potato? Have you ever wondered why you can't stop eating those Cheetos? Some of you have probably wondered why you can't do any better, and it's because you have temptations. The snacks and drinks around you fight against you and stop you from becoming healthy. The problem isn't just the temptation itself, it isn't even the lack of desire. The problem is that we don't have the right restraints. In some gyms, these beverages and snacks can be found right in front of the equipment and can entice you to eat or drink them, which is the exact opposite of what you want to do at the gym. It's also pretty important to remember that you don't have to stop eating all junk food. You can still eat ice cream, soda, chocolate, and pizza. How? Well, everything needs to be in moderation. No matter what, too much of anything is bad for you. So long as you regulate yourself, you can still enjoy your junk food and be healthy. Number 9. Gyms take no responsibility. Exercise comes at a risk, a risk that many of us fail to recognize. Nearly 460,000 people were injured in 2012 alone due to improper use of exercise equipment. Not surprisingly, many gyms make you sign a contract that allows them to waive some, if not all, responsibility in the event that you hurt yourself. It is totally understandable for a business to protect itself, but sometimes the gym has faulty equipment, which can lead to injury. The best way to deal with it is to promptly tell management about the equipment before someone is hurt. Something else to note is that some gyms aren't prepared if a member is having a heart attack. Usually, most public places have AED, an automated external defibrillator, but gyms aren't required to have them. And even if they do, their staff probably have no idea how to use them. Talking about untrained staff, some gym trainers aren't even certified. Personal trainers do not require a license to practice. So, as soon as you sign that membership contract, you may be signing away your rights if you do get hurt. You guys want an extra tip? Don't keep valuables in the lockers either. Yep, you guessed it, gyms are also not responsible for stolen items. So make sure to keep your valuables on you at all times, or just leave them in the car or at home. Number 8. Their equipment isn't always clean. A gym is a place meant for anyone and everyone to sweat to achieve their goals. It's pretty much expected that the equipment will be covered in sweat. Although it's proper manners for people to clean up after themselves, many people simply forget and the sweat remains on the equipment. This won't be a big problem because most gyms actually do clean their equipment, but unfortunately there are of course some gyms that just simply don't care. If you regularly see that the mats, floors, and equipment are kept dirty, whether it be sweat or dust, it usually means that the gym doesn't care about cleaning. Now there are also other dangers of sweaty, dirty equipment, for example being exposed to many skin infections. These infections spread like wildfire and are extremely common amongst athletes. Most common amongst these are athlete's foot, jock itch, boils, impetigo, herpes simplex, plantar warts, staph infections, and ringworms. These skin infections can be spread via mats, equipment, and from people touching each other like most athletes do. So stay clean and wash your hands no matter where you exercise. Number 7. You can pay less. Membership fees are costly, and one might be tempted to cancel their memberships to save money. But don't worry, many gyms offer discounts and other programs. So make sure to check the gym's online website for promotions. Remember that there are plenty of other ways to save, like signing up for a trial run. Call your nearest fitness club and ask for a no-commitment trial, as most clubs generally provide a week pass and this will allow you to see the condition of the gym before you commit to an annual contract. Always try to negotiate a deal and ask for additional bonuses like a training assistant. And for those of you who have insurance, check your benefits. Some insurance plans provide discounts and some even reimburse you if you go to certain fitness centers. You can also browse the internet and find the best pricing for you. The internet is there to be used, so use it. Number 6. They use shady techniques to maximize their profits. Some gyms simply don't care about their members and skimp on essential services to retain them. Some fitness gyms are actively discouraging members from coming in daily to train. Some gyms even close down treadmills and other important equipment to lower the number of people in the gym, so new potential customers will think it's not crowded. This reasoning is somewhat valid because new customers are likely to be more nervous and embarrassed about exercising in a public area. Managers and employees also try to get people in unbreakable contracts with enormous fees attached to it. There have been cases where employees alter contracts after the fact and leave customers on the hook for thousands of dollars. In the end, gyms need to look for their bottom line and maximize their profits. But gyms should not cripple and sacrifice the services they provide in the name of profit.
Number five, most of their customers only show up for New Year's resolutions. When New Year's Eve rolls by, don't go straight to the gym and buy a membership. You don't want to take half measures on a resolution. People continuously, year after year, make a commitment to get fit and never see it through. It costs a lot of money and sometimes it becomes nearly impossible to break out of contract. Unsurprisingly, gyms have also realized that 22% of new gym memberships come just in January, which represents an increase of 40% in volume. If any of you go to the gym regularly, you might have noticed the second week of January is always the busiest of the entire year. 80% of New Year's resolution members stop coming within a couple months. A trick to keep you in the gym is to start slow. People who quit push themselves too hard and expect results immediately. They get disappointed when they worked so hard for nothing. And so, they just leave. Number four, you'll be going there for quite some time before you see results. Some of you might remember that in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you were able to bulk up your character in the gym. It took lots of button mashing, but surprisingly, your character changed from being a twig to full on muscle within an hour. Unfortunately, working out in real life isn't as simple as that. It might take weeks or even months to see any type of visible result. Commercials and online advertisements have falsely led many of us to believe that we can lose 25 pounds within three weeks on just a simple diet. These ads often forget to say two hours of exercise daily for the next three weeks. Don't be surprised if you can't hit your goals. Goals always seem unattainable at first. Only after hard work will you achieve your goals. Just remember, don't give up. Number three, the quickest and hardest exercises may not be for you. The gym isn't just a place for you to get ripped. It's a place to learn, grow, and improve your everyday life. Many people forget that, and in turn, they bulk up, build muscle, and still feel weak. Heavy exercise isn't the only way to work out. Focus more on functional fitness, which helps strengthen muscles and ligaments for everyday activities, and to prevent further injuries. As we get older, a condition known as sarcopenia begins to develop at around age 40. This natural aging process withers and weakens skeletal muscles and ligaments. This deterioration does accelerate over time. Thankfully, functional fitness exercise can help counter these effects and can lead to living a semi-pain-free old age life. Number two, you don't really need them. The mantra that everyone that needs to lose weight must go to the gym and start exercising is not entirely justified. There is no argument that the gym is an important place to become and remain healthy. But it is also important to understand that without small steps and a solid plan, a gym membership, well, it's pretty much useless. If you are determined to lose weight, start small by simply walking or jogging around the neighborhood. You can also go walk or bike to pick up your groceries. Determination isn't just needed to lose weight, but you also need a proper diet. No matter how hard you work out at the gym, if you eat like a pig as soon as you get back home, then you're essentially not going to make any progress. A proper diet is another step people have to take before jumping the gun and buying a gym membership. Remember this, the best time to plant a tree was yesterday. The second best time is today. Number one, working out less often can be good for you. Some believe that to achieve big gains, we must push ourselves harder and harder up to our breaking points. This type of exercise is also known as training to failure, where you repeat a task until you can't move any longer, where you go rep after rep until you gas out. When you exercise this way, you exhaust yourself and actually do a fair bit of damage to your muscles. This can be a good thing. When your body repairs your muscles, the muscles come back larger and have more volume than before. Most people should know this, but for those who don't, this particular workout is not healthy to do every single day. Although strength training can push your limits and has been proven to work, an important part of strength training is to relax your muscles and take a day off from the gym to allow your muscles to come back stronger. One or two days of rest can ultimately allow your muscles to fully repair themselves and give your body enough time to get ready for your next day of exercise. Recovery is one of the most crucial aspects of exercise, and if not enough recovery is given to your muscles, it can actually negatively affect your performance at the gym. 